What's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? As promised, we are back with episode number one. My name is Eric Ramirez. I am Rigoberto Madrigal. And we're going to go over Da Vinci versus Premiere, Avid, and Final Cut. Rigo's going to give us the reasons why he prefers Da Vinci over other editing platforms. It's very simple. The workflow is very smooth. You go from bringing in your media to your edit tab where you edit your media to your fusion side in case you want to do any VFX. Mm -hmm. Then you go into your color side where you color all your stuff. Then you go into your Fairlight tab where you want to do any of the audio mixing. Mm -hmm. And finally, you go into the delivery tab. I started in Final Cut, then went to Premiere, mm -hmm. then did a little bit of Avid, and then even did some Final Cut X. Once I dove into DaVinci itself, I found it very seamless mm -hmm. without any hiccups, without migrating stuff to like another software mm -hmm. like After Effects and going to another coloring software yeah. to try to do color and then having to like redo my online. One of the reasons that I found it really easy to use DaVinci over any of the other softwares. It's been one of the best tools I've used for finishing products and delivering products as well. Wow, that's crazy because I edit all these YouTube videos on Premiere and he's completely right. I have to jump and I forgot like to Photoshop sometimes or Illustrator to, you know, cut out backgrounds for logos, so on and so forth. Uh, After Effects for titles, lower thirds and stuff like that. And it honestly slows down your flow. With this, I've jumped into DaVinci occasionally in big projects that we've done together. And it's very, pretty much straightforward. DaVinci was always the middle ground between all those softwares to be like, oh, hey, we need to do some color grading. All right, cool. Let's send it right over to DaVinci. That's a great point that he's making. Uh, DaVinci was sort of just the middle person. It was just the color. If uh, you've worked in the industry or you're starting in the industry, you learn quickly about offline editing. And offline mm -hmm. editing usually entails working in one of those softwares to mm -hmm. start. Then once you sort of lock your cut, then you go into DaVinci to color. Then once you finish your color, you take it back into uh, Premiere, Avid, or whatever software you're doing to finalize. This next topic, he's gonna talk about the differences between the free version and the paid version. The biggest setbacks, I guess, from the free version mm -hmm. is that you don't have the capability of editing 4K or using the tracking tools or some of the denoiser tools and some of the open fx tools but i mean for the most part you have every other tool available to you which is a lot too you know <laughs> it's a lot of tools i still utilize adobe from time to time yeah so i pay a subscription for adobe so i'm paying 39 or however much it is a month so i can utilize all the tools in adobe as far as like Adobe Premiere, mm. Photoshop, Illustrator, like he was talking about. With DaVinci, I've bought it for $2.99 yeah. and I get every tool that's in there free and free updates as well. Pretty much indefinitely, you own uh, the software, you get the key and you get updates as the as they keep evolving DaVinci. And as you said, they keep evolving DaVinci. I think that's one of the things that made me transition into DaVinci. Over the last year, what I realized is that I felt sometimes limited with Premiere, you know? Mm. It almost feels like they, they don't have any more updates. Like, it's just, <laughs> they gave us the software, you're paying for it, a monthly subscription, yeah. and you can utilize everything they have on there. Where DaVinci is really listening to the editors, or the editors, the colorists, the people that are in the post world, and are updating the software with some of those recommendations that they had. It crashes a lot less than Premiere. I'm gonna <laughs> tell you that much right now. Premiere seems to be crashing in every project. You layer two more videos on top of your first layer, you're done. <laughs> you're shooting 4K, I mean, even 10K and stuff like that oh. with the Helium at this point. The software is gonna demand a lot more. Yeah. So if you're bringing in red into Premiere, you're gonna tend to see sometimes uh, you know, the crashes. And I'm not saying that that won't happen from time to time in DaVinci where you're doing, you know, heavy editing effects or, you know, even heavy color uh, notes mm -hmm. on some of those mm -hmm. shots. But I felt less crashes in DaVinci being able to <laughs> being able to utilize it a lot more smoothly than Premiere. You don't have to wait until it loads, it renders, and you're like, oh, okay, cool. I finally get to see it in real time. I feel DaVinci does a really good job in um, really taking advantage of your hardware and playing back in real time 
uh, the footage. The HDR workflow is much better than Premiere, I'm assuming, right? One of the things that I found is that you can work in HDR mm -hmm. in, in DaVinci and deliver in HDR, which as far as I know, it's not it's not quite as easy to do it in Premiere. Mm -hmm. uh, I just don't have enough experience to be able to tell you like, hey, yeah, I could deliver in Premiere HDR. DaVinci has been the tool that we've been using mm -hmm. to be able to work in HDR format and deliver HDR format. So it feels like it's now a standard where you have to, you know, obviously uh, export, I guess, uh, regular Rex 1080 yeah. and then do an HDR version, right? Yeah, that's one of the things that also, as you get into the industry, you're gonna start learning that the more we advance with technology and the more we advance with tools, there, there's going to be higher formats, higher you know, specs. Yeah. HDR has been one of the latest things that we've been sort of utilizing as a mm. spec to deliver. All right, guys, so hopefully you got some nice information of why he prefers DaVinci over other platforms. Trust me, we're not bashing any other platform because they each have a, a specialty they offer. And... It's not just for us, but to a lot of people. And our next episode will be... The next episode is going to be organization, workflow, and how we set up a project in DaVinci and begin our editing process. Uh, we'll go through some of the folder structures, how to import the media, how to start setting up the project. Mm -hmm. So you kind of start, you know, diving into your own, your own edits, your own music videos in DaVinci as well. If you want to tune in uh, to our next episode, please make sure to smash the like button. That would help us out tremendously. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please write them down below. And we'll catch you guys on episode number two. Peace. Peace.